of the million things that we could discuss with you, we're going to skip them all entirely and go to an incredible project that you are part of the initiation of, part of the funding of, called the Breakthrough, uh, Breakthrough Star Shot. Explain to us what that is. Well, we announced it uh, alongside uh, Stephen Hawking and also Mark Zuckerberg was kind enough to support this by joining the board. But essentially, this is the first systematic attempt uh, to send a uh, little small robot to the nearby star. So it's the first real attempt to execute interstellar travel. Because this is, I mean, even to reach the limits of our, of our solar system has taken, it's taken Viking 30 years to get that far. The, uh, but to get further than that again, what sort of distance are we talking about? Yes, so Voyager took, um, Voyager, Voyager will take uh, about 75,000 years to reach nearby star at the speed that it is going. And uh, we have actually done quite a bit in terms of being able to go fast. So we managed to go a thousand times faster uh, in the last hundred years, essentially. But uh, in order to go to the nearby star in 20 years, you need to go another factor of thousand. And this is exactly what we're proposing to do within the lifetime of our generation. OK, so it's a very different spaceship from the perception we have of a spaceship in our head. What kind of craft will this be? Well, uh, it's a little bit uh, counterintuitive because people usually imagine uh, something along the lines of uh, Star Wars, uh, so the huge spaceship and uh, a lot of fuel, um, unclear how it moves around. but. Uh, you really need to go very small. So you need two things. One is very small and one is very large. The small thing is a spacecraft. You need to go an order of magnitude of, uh, of a gram. And uh, a very big thing you need is a big laser to, to accelerate it to 20% of speed of light. And uh, the incredible thing is that, you know, although it was always a sort of a dream of the big minds uh, to be able to go to the stars, it's only in the last 15 to 20 years that technology evolved enough so that we indeed can build a spaceship which is one gram, which will be a fully functional um, uh, machine which will be able to take uh, photos, make measurements, send information back from four light years away and uh, be able to survive uh, huge distances. You mentioned the laser. The laser's not, um, the, laser, it, the laser's here rather than on the Yeah, spaceship. the laser should be sitting on the ground, and it is uh, a very big laser, the one that we don't have. But the laser will be pushing the sail, also a very light sail, and the spaceship will be attached to the sail. So it's basically going full circle. You know, we have been traveling like this for, uh, you know, a few hundred years ago, and uh, you know, using the wind and the sail, and the beauty of that is that you don't need uh, to carry fuel. You know, the problem with tra space travel is that you need a lot of fuel. The more fuel you need, the more fuel you need on top of it because you need to accelerate even more fuel, and uh, and there is no way around this. So leaving fuel behind is really the best thing you can, uh, you can imagine. And people knew it for the last 50 years. What really became uh, uniquely available to our generation and that we can build a very small spaceship, which is due to the Moore's law, and that we can build a very big laser, again, due to the Moore's law, which is less understood and less known, but lasers actually do follow Moore's law in terms of the power and the cost. By the way, for those of you who are not in with a technical background, Moore's law states that computer processing will become twice as powerful or half the size every 18 months. And it's basically, we've stayed on that parallel for the genesis of, of the computer science that we have at the moment. But this also applies to lasers, that, that yes. at that same time scale, they will double and double and double in size. Uh, yes, we will be able to build more and more powerful lasers. And uh, the development that was quite recent is that we can now mass produce those lasers and we can synchronize them in a certain way, which is called phase locking, which is essentially creating one big laser. And um, with those two technological developments, which seem completely unrelated, because we're using lasers for different things, 
and uh, microelectronics for some other applications. But putting those two together, all of a sudden, as we believe, allows you to travel between the stars, which is sort of a non-trivial conclusion. So you create a sail around a tiny capsule, less than one gram. You create a sail, and presumably the technology of the sail is few, also... A few meters. A few meters, yeah. but the technology of which the, 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 the sail itself is made of something, again, this is, again, another generation ahead in terms of nanotechnology. Yes. We, we need a little more progress in terms of uh, to be able to design the sail, which is light enough so that you can actually push it very hard and also robust enough so that it doesn't evaporate. But uh, I think there is a path on um, how we can get there. And then you let these sit in orbit, presumably, and then they are accelerated by getting a burst from a laser on Earth. Yes. How much acceleration are they given? So basically, you put the sail and the spaceship in orbit somewhere maybe 30,000 miles from, from the surface. Uh, because if you launch it from the surface, it will not survive the atmos atmosphere you know, friction. So you need to put it out there. And then you, you need to point with very high precision, which we can do. And it takes about a few minutes to accelerate it to 20% of speed of light if it is a gram scale nanocraft, as we call it. And uh, it's about 30,000 g acceleration. And that can get to the next solar system. And this can get to Alpha Centauri, which is the nearby solar system, well, sun, stellar system. Stellar system, yeah. To, to, uh, yeah. In uh, 20 years, it's four light years away. Now, it'll be going at some p speed when it passes through uh, Alpha Centauri. Do, do, what can it possibly send us back? Well, it, uh, if it goes for 20 years and survives, but the beauty of this model is that you can launch them pretty much every day, and because they are so cheap, you know, you can build uh, one uh, kind of around the cost of an iPhone. So the most expensive part stays on the Earth, which is helpful, and then the, the very cheap part you know, goes uh, at a very high speed. So if you launch a few thousand of them, then you can um, you can hope that a fraction of them will survive. And then it's a fly-by mission because there is no way you can slow down. And uh, you take a few images and then you send them back. And we build up a store of images, presumably. Images of planets. Of planets. So this could be a chance for us to find a closer image of exoplanets, ones that could support life in a different stellar system to our own. Yes. Within our, uh, within our lifetime. Well, it takes, we believe, about a generation to launch it. I would say maybe 25, 35 years, something like that from now and then add another 20 years uh, to, to get there, and then an, add another four years to get the signal back, okay. the image back. OK. Yeah. You're not thinking short term here, really, are you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, that's as, that's as good as we can go. But we call it a starship because the moonshot was a, was a term essentially ascribed to Kennedy when Kennedy said in 63 that we will land on the moon by the end of the decade, and then essentially obliged the technology to catch up with that aspiration. This is the same to a certain extent, except a star shot, and you're saying that we can go interstellar in 30 years because we have to jump forward a couple of generations in laser technology, a couple of generations in terms of creating the craft, and maybe a couple of generations in terms of nanotechnology, all of which you think can be done in 30 years. Uh, to launch, yes. To launch, yes. I think so. Well, we, we don't know. There are a number of technology challenges that you need to overcome. And we, uh, we, when we announced this, we published about 20 of those challenges. We believe that there is a roadmap for addressing each one of them. Uh, but we want to encourage sort of a global debate and discussion and uh, sort of offering solutions and that sort of thing. But, uh, but we believe that the Moore's Law for lasers is going to play itself. If it continues on the same track, it can play itself out in a matter of maybe one or two decades, after which this becomes very practical. How much fun are you having with this? Well, we just announced it a, a month ago, so. Uh, Still, you're at the dreaming stage. How much fun <laughs> is that? Yeah, by the way, we announced it on April 12th, which is the which is exactly the 51st, 55th anniversary of the first manned flight. Uh, in 1961, and uh, incidentally, uh, I have carried the same name as the first You astronaut. were named after Yuri Gagarin. And I was named after him, yes. So I, I thought that 
I kind of, um, my parents send the message in a way. So. <laughs> Listen, it's, a, it's an astonishing idea. Uh, it's an incredible piece of thinking. Uh, and it would be a remarkable, remarkable achievement if it, uh, if it happens. Thank you very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Yuri Milner. Please. Thanks. Uh,